Hey, lovely people. I thought what I'd do today is maybe a little different and revealing about how my research works and the things that you can find. So some of you will know that I've been very mildly involved as a filmmaker with the ATLAS project. ATLAS is a NASA-funded telescope network that looks for near-Earth objects. Since the ATLAS system's been up and running and various other near-Earth object observatories, over 9,000 new asteroids have been discovered that are slightly smaller than one kilometre, a thousand metres in diameter. A few years ago, we weren't even looking for them. Only the ones over a kilometre were measured and recorded by the Minor Planet Society. But now, the small ones. You mean a 900 metre lump of rock hitting the Earth is going to be devastating. Every night, the Wide Field Telescope takes multiple pictures, and in the morning, they come to work. The stars, things that don't move, are parsed out, and anything that changes in brightness or moves is flagged to Larry Deneau and John Tonnery's desktop, where they take a close look at what they found. And Atlas discovers a near-Earth object that's going to strike the Earth in 70 to 100 years. OK. And this object is called 2016 SJ35. And they saw it. Now, the interesting thing is, so objects appear, and by only taking four pictures, they can work out its future orbit. They know the orbit of the Earth. And if the object is sometime in the future going to hit or cross the Earth's orbit, it's given the code V1. It's going to hit the Earth. What the blog goes on to say is a bit nearer the time, you know, 70 years from now, they'll be able to know exactly where on Earth it's going to hit. And because it's a V1, other observatories have now got involved to get more data. That's the rabbit hole I went down. First of all, let's just confirm its orbit and other telescopes now have, but wouldn't it be great if we could see it? Well, so I went to the Minor Planet Society and looked up, what's it called? It's called 2006 SJ35. And there's a kind of data sheet on that asteroid, and it confirms it's a V1. It also gives it a J or a P number, which is its potential destructive power. So they know it's going to hit Earth. But then on the Minor Planets data sheet, and this is my mind working, saying, well, they sent it to JPL, JPL's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. It's a contractor who works for the government. We're asked to visualize it. I was going, well, how are you going to see the guy? It's a long way away and it's very small. First of all, they would use this instrument, if it was still available, called Arecibo, because Arecibo never was a satellite dish. It never was a radio telescope. It is a military radar. It sends energy out, bounces off an object, and can visualize it. Here is a picture of something that Arecibo can see. This guy is an asteroid. You can clearly see it's made up of rubbly rock, and it's rotating. But that's not the amazing thing. This asteroid that you're looking at now is 1.3 million miles away. Just think of the resolution, the power of Arecibo. If they can see a rock over a million miles away, they can count the rivets on a spaceship. But, of course, it fell down. And interesting, here's the log of Arecibo, and notice how it says non-functioning. Oh, poor thing. But who's doing it now? So that's the way my brain works. I mean, Arecibo is broken. They still need high-resolution radar images of things in space. Who's doing it? Well, it turns out this place. 
It's called Goldstone. It's a network of dishes. We think of it as the deep space network. It keeps in touch with various spacecraft. Um, but it's not only that, of course. It's a radar station, a space radar station. One of these movable antennas actually can bounce radar waves off an object in space. And that's exactly what they do for the military. And this is the kind of resolution they'd get from a lump of rock, an asteroid. This is a radar image taken by the Goldstone radar dish to confirm a V1 impacting asteroid that is going to hit Earth. So where am I going with this, Simon? Well, it just means that, OK, we've lost Arecibo, but it was there for many years. Radar, Goldstone, space radar, would see and visualize anything approaching Earth. So if anything, anybody, any craft ever approached Earth, even a million miles away, we would see it. Other survey telescopes, then Goldstone would be swung into action by NASA, JPL, and the military to actually count the potential rivets and portholes on anything approaching Earth. OK. Now I know, and so do you. So that's a bit of an insight into how my brain works and how by digging just a little bit, you can start finding interesting things which might be relevant to UFOs. And as you also know, I live in France. So my web browser is in French. And what I wanted to do with this story was to dig into JPL, um, NASA, the Minor Planet Society, which are all in the US. So for that, I needed a VPN. And the VPN I use is NordVPN. It just works great. It's incredibly low cost. But today, I can pass on to you a massive discount because they want me to mention it to you. So if you go to NordVPN forward slash Professor Simon, you'll get a really good deal off a of VPN because you need one today. I hope that was interesting to you. Certainly it was interesting to me. I found out something that I really didn't know. If you did give this film a thumbs up, please subscribe. It's free of charge. And if you really want to help out, become a Patreon. Because it's you guys, the Patreons, who really keep this channel going and letting me say the truth is out there. Mm -hmm.